Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers and we are into part three of career decisions, good, bad, and whatever. And the key here is bloom where you are planted. I did not want to be a T37 instructor, I wanted to be a T38, but that was out of my hands. And um, well, uh, I was starting my Air Force career, you need to do a good job or you're kind of screwed. So I had to, uh, you know, uh, buckle down and do the best I could with it. Well, to be a uh, T-37 instructor after, uh, you know, I, I had graduated, uh, they sent me down to Randall Air Force Base uh, to, to learn how to be a T-37 instructor. And this is a historic base, Army Airfield Base, very historic. Uh, San Antonio is just a great city to live in, and we had a lot of fun there. But uh, learning to be an Air Force instructor is an extremely structured endeavor. Um, it, it is, and very intense. Well, I got through the program down at Randolph, and uh, I was coming back to Enid, Oklahoma for my career uh, for about three years, my assignment to be a uh, T-37 instructor pilot. And we actually had a house built. It was being built while I was down in uh, training, and when we came back, it was pretty much done, although I had to do things like put in a lawn, uh, which can be uh, quite... Um, an endeavor in Oklahoma, um, put in a well and stuff like that. But anyway, this was our first home. And there I am. That's my picture now. By uh, the time that this picture was taken, I was a first lieutenant, uh, two years in uh, total uh, service time, and I was assigned to the 8th uh, Flight Training Squadron at Enid, Oklahoma. Now, those of you familiar with the T-37 know that we uh, flew and instructed in the T-37B. The T-37A model, uh, which uh, there were, I think, two of them built. Uh, one of them is out at uh, uh, Laughlin Air Force Base, which is a basic training uh, base uh, for uh, Air Force enlisted people, and it's, uh, it's mounted out there. And uh, it was kind of fun. I, I, drove out, I drove out there, and of course I had my little sticker on my car that said I was the absolute high rank of a second lieutenant, and I, <laughs> the car was getting saluted all over the place. It was almost embarrassing. But I wanted to see the XT-37 because uh, it didn't have as big a spin strikes. It looks like it's got some spin strikes there, and the tail was 18 inches short, and it just didn't have good uh, spin characteristics so they had to make some modification and that's my wife there and uh, my oldest son there on the wing things were different back then this is a car seat it's not the fancy apparatus you see now you could put them actually in the front seat not a problem no airbags airbags did not exist so i had this little uh that's my oldest son mark there again i had this little uh car seat there and i got some uh, decals and I put a danger ejection seat on it. All right, now one of the things you do as an instructor pilot is you solo students in the T-37. And when you start out as a brand new guy, they make sure they give you somebody who they think is a very good student. And Lester was a very good student. He was my first solo. And uh, they have uh, this little thing that uh, when, when you solo, you get put in the stocks and hose down. Well, they also have another little custom that the instructor uh, also gets put in the stocks when he solos his first student and gets washed down. The, uh, the yellow arrow there goes to the student I had just soloed. Of course, then you get to the point where you get your next students. And after the first batch, it's a free for all. You just get the luck of the draw. And my next student, I worked and worked with him. And he, um, hmm. He just didn't make it. I mean, I tried everything I could. We worked hard. Uh, he just basically couldn't think real time in the final turn. And he had bought this painting. Um, and he knew I loved the 38. It was kind of hard to, uh, you know, it was hard to keep quiet. But it was pretty obviously obvious that I loved the T-38. So when he washed out, he didn't feel that he wanted this anymore. And uh, um, I had some of my students over for dinner, uh, him included, uh, where I cooked, barbecued some steaks, and he presented me with this picture and uh, a poem that he had written, which was which was very touching. But I still wanted to fly the 38 somehow. Well, 
the base had an FCF, Functional Check Flight Function, there on base, where they flew the T-37 and the T-38. And I got to know the, um, the commander of the unit pretty well, a lieutenant colonel. And he was an interesting character. I gave him a, a check ride. We had to give him an emergency procedures check ride in the T-37. And I uh, uh, failed an engine on him. And uh, uh, it was a steady state flight condition. We were just cruising around. And, and I asked him, aren't you going to do the engine restart? And he goes, no. And I go, why? And he says, well, if an engine fails from a steady state condition, you're most likely not going to get it restarted. And, and if you try, you could have some problems because it failed for a reason. Uh, you know, it, you weren't at the edge of the envelope. You didn't have a compressor stall due to uh, disturbed airflow. I said, something's wrong with the engine. If you try to restart it nine times out of 10, you'll cause yourself more problems. And I thought, well, that's pretty intelligent. Of course, I had been raised in the ATC, um, you know, venue where uh, you followed the book exactly. But he was in charge of this operation and he and I were getting along great. And uh, what they have to do is they have to get a slot. They send you down to Randolph Air Force Base. It's a month-long training. I later did become an FCF pilot, and it was interesting. I didn't get the month-long training out at Edwards. And uh, they basically uh, said, and I'm getting ahead of my story here, but basically said that you couldn't fly FCF unless you'd flown FCF. And I said, well, I haven't flown FCF. And the guy says, no, 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 no. Tell him you've flown FCF. So I said, okay, I've flown FCF. They gave me one ride uh, as to refresh me on it. Okay, well, I studied like heck. And then I had my check ride with Dick Scobie, the Challenger commander, and, and I passed. Apparently, I, I had learned in that one ride uh, what they apparently learn in a month. No, you don't. You can, you can never duplicate the intensity of training that you would get in a month. Uh, but um, I had enough people mentoring me that, that I did okay. But problem was, I never got... To go to the FCF training out at Vance because the colonel was reassigned. And we got another colonel in there. And he had been in T 38s. I believe he was uh, one of the flight commanders. And they needed a slot for a new position. Well, he had his guy uh, that he brought in. And so my whole thing of getting into FCF went away. It's, uh, you know, uh, a lot of decisions depend on your. Uh, commanders. They really do. And I'll, I'll explain one here coming up here. Very significant. But if you got a good boss, you can do well. If you got a boss who isn't so good or doesn't like you uh, and favors somebody else, you don't do as well. Well, there was a big problem in Air Training Command at the time, and it was a big issue with the instructor. See, all our students were getting a high percentage of fighters, the type of assignment we wanted. What were the instructors getting? Well, the instructors were getting such coveted assignments as missile officer. Or you could be in charge of the commissary. Yeah, you run a grocery store. I didn't come in the Air Force to run a grocery store. This was very disturbing. So I decided, man, I've, I've got to try to do something because this this is going downhill rapidly. I mean, I'm being a T-37 instructor, something I really didn't want all that much. And my JEX job could be even worse. Oh, my gosh. Well, time is going on. My son is getting older. He's getting bigger. That's uh, me and him in the T-37. And I got to do a lot of neat things. Um, they had an ROTC unit at Coe College, which was just north of Iowa City, and they needed some Air Force pilots to come in, give a talk. And since I and the, uh, the other gentleman there had uh, both gone through the University of Iowa, they selected us to go up there. And so we got to fly a T-37 into Cedar Rapids, which was kind of a fun time. Now, I was trying to enhance my career, and I was doing a lot of projects around the squadron. I actually remodeled some rooms and stuff, uh, did carpentry work, and it was, it was it, uh, my, uh, my flight commander basically said, yeah, if you want something uh, 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 re, uh, redone in the squadron, just contact me. Well, I had arranged through my alma mater, University of Iowa, I got a degree in electrical engineering, I had arranged to do a correspondence uh, electrical engineering course, mostly in stability and control. Uh, this was not quite set up. Uh, I arranged uh, with an, my uh, previous uh, student advisor there, uh, dean of the school, to set up a program, and he put this through, and I was getting college credits. So um, I was doing a, a lot of things that were looking good. I was very active. And at, at the time, they had an officer efficiency rating program where everybody got, I think it was like a 9-1, which was everybody could walk on water, everybody was wonderful, 
Uh, if you didn't get that, uh, you, you, you know, if you got anything but the highest rating, you were, you were bad. So you had to really go into the uh, write-up to really uh, differentiate whether this person was really good or not. And it caused a lot of problem with people on follow-on assignments because they couldn't really evaluate whether this guy was a good guy or not because everybody was a good guy. So they redid the system and you could only give so many of the top ratings. Well, my flight commander, um, Captain Rule, liked me a lot, and we got along very well. And uh, the system had just come in, and I got one of the uh, the first top ratings. I think he didn't really understand how this was supposed to work or something like that, but I got, uh, I got a top rating, and I had gotten some other uh, things that were looking good for my career, and I ended up getting selected for regular commission. At the time, as the uh, the commander there, the squadron commander said, these were very few and far in between, and I got one. So it was really cool. Good enhancement uh, to the career. All right, I'm going on as an instructor, and I talk about this in another video, and uh, had a student who, uh, Lieutenant Clack there, he was uh, had a slot in the Fresno Guard. He was going to fly 106s, had a uh, very beautiful young wife uh, who was connected to a very wealthy family, and he kind of had life made. Uh, but he had very serious problems handling emergency procedures. We called him Lieutenant Clank, actually, because he would just freeze up and couldn't function. Well, I worked a lot with him and a lot and some of it was actually off the books because uh, I was giving him more time than he was supposed to be getting but we got through it uh, I got him so he could calm down so he could handle the situation and he did great in fact he went to t38s and he did just super and he went to the 106 and the thing I always felt bad and I've had many people assure me it wasn't my responsibility because he had been seen by many many people after me but if I would have washed him out, he wouldn't have been in the situation where he was doing an intercept on a T-33 out over the West Coast. I was a pilot out at Edwards at the time, and I, I picked up the paper and saw about how he had uh, uh, broke down and stood up and crashed into the uh, Pacific Ocean and killed himself. So that was, uh, that was something I regretted, but um, like a lot of people said, yeah, that wasn't my fault, because uh, he did get up to speed. All right, here we are out in my house in Eden, Oklahoma. And I have a little thing. Uh, I had my first son, a month later we move, go into the Air Force. There's my daughter. Okay, a month, uh, this picture is actually should be more towards the end because a month after uh, we had my daughter, we we went out uh, to uh, to Edwards. And on the right side is, uh, the two people on the right side are my parents and on the left is my uh, wife's parents. But anyway, I had heard about this really cool deal. Now, you know I mentioned that Oh, oh, that atrocious wallpaper. Yeah, we actually did pick that out. It's it's kind of scary now, but yeah, yeah, pretty atrocious. Oh, well, uh, tastes change. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, we had heard about this guy. Now, remember I said that pilots, instructor pilots, were just not getting flying jobs, and it was really bad, demoralizing, and I was trying to figure something out. Well, we had found out that one of the guys from uh, our squadron, actually a, a guy named Mike, had gotten a job out at the Air Force Flight Test Center as a chase pilot, and uh, that was kind of the uh, secondary job. Your primary job was officer in charge of current ops in the command post, and this sounded cool. He had not only a flying job, but he had a really neat flying job at the pinnacle of flying at the Air Force Flight Test Center. And uh, it was funny. I had a number of people said, well, why would they take you? And, of course, once I got the position, they said, that was great that they took you. <laughs> you know, but anyway, um, I, I called up Mike, and I talked to him, and, and I talked to his boss, Colonel Sanders. Yes, corn and cluck for under a buck was the kidding, but real great guy. But um, they... Uh, they uh, wanted me to come out and talk to him about taking this job. And Mike had kind of, you know, greased the wheel for me. Well, in the process, I was doing a lot of things. I was the, the, uh, the base liaison officer for the Boy Scouts. And uh, we had an award ceremony. And uh, as part of it, you know, they invited me, the liaison, and the, uh, the wing commander, you know, the highest ranking guy on the base, they invited him to come too. Well, I had no idea. Uh, that the wing commander had 
won the Silver Beaver Award. I didn't even know what the Silver Beaver Award was. I was a Boy Scout only for a short time. But uh, and we had things on base where we had a jamboree and stuff, and I got involved in that. But I ended up working with the wing commander directly uh, because, uh, you know, a lot of coordinating this stuff, and it was a base activity and just, just various things. So I spent a fair amount of time working directly uh, with the, uh, the, the wing commander. And I was also in charge of the uh, U.S. government Series E bond drive on base. And that was also another function where they had uh, a big uh, gala type dinner. And I'm there sitting next to the wing commander on that. So I had a lot of interaction with the wing commander and, you know, we, we knew each other fairly well. Well, I was trying to, you know, personally enhance myself, career and stuff like that. And I read this uh, book called The Magic of Thinking Big. Uh, as far as self-help books go, this is probably the most disastrous book I could have read. Because, yeah, it. I mean, it's important to think big. You know, people who make it big, make it big because they think big. If you think small, you're never going to make it. And too many times in my life, I thought small. Doesn't work so well in the military. Because what I did, you know, I'd been on a very good basis with the wing commander. And uh, um, I just mentioned to him that I had been talking uh, to the Edwards people and they were uh, wanted to put in a by name request for me, but I had to go out there and see them uh, first. And uh, he said, well, let's just take a T-37 and go out there. And I said, okay, that sounds like a great idea. So I took a T-37, I went with a, another pilot. Um, and uh, the interesting thing was it was a it was a 10 leg cross country, five out, five back, and the airplane worked perfectly the entire time. But what had happened is I had, I had not gone through first my flight commander, then the section commander, then the squadron commander, and then the wing commander. I had missed quite a few steps in the chain of command. Okay, I'm still a new guy, but I should have understood the chain of command and just because I was in a good relationship with the wing commander, I violated it. And my boss, uh, my, my flight commander brought me in. He was an F-4 Vietnam guy and, you know, really kind of cool, laid back. And I actually got out of the Air Force because his family was involved in whiskey production. So, uh, cool guy. But anyway, he says, yeah, you know, you screwed up here. And I go, yeah, I realized that too late. And he says, well, you know, I, I, I don't really care. But the uh, section commander... Um, who uh, I talk about another one who got himself in a lot of trouble. But anyway, he is just livid. So this did not go well with my career at all at that point because uh, uh, the good OERs were probably going to come to an end. But anyway, I went out to Edwards, and this is a picture I took. This was the sign, historic sign out there. I had a very nice meeting with, with him. Mike showed me all around the base, and it was just like being in heaven. This was this was fantastic. Um, it was this is the pinnacle of aviation out there, and they put in a by name request for me, and um, well, that's when everything started to get interesting. Now my career was going along. My you know, uh, I was a, 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 a C flight instructor pilot and I did the Stanovel and stuff, but, um, the squadron commander wanted me to become the admin officer. And, you know, it's not good to disagree with where they want to put you. It would have been a lot better for my career if I would have said, yes, sucked it up and did that too. Well, the, unfortunately the admin officer did not fly much at all. And I wanted to go to pre pit. Now, what they had instituted in the time from when I had first been an instructor to the instructors now, instead of sending off the new pilot straight down to Randolph to learn how to be an instructor, uh, we gave him some time at the home base to get used to flying uh, in the right seat, which they'd never flown in before, the instructor position, and I flew in the left seat as a student. So we'd get him kind of um, there's that thumbs up again. So <laughs> we'd get them kind of adapted to that. And, uh, you know, they'd get a number of hours. So when they went down there, they had a better uh, chance of doing well. So I did that for a while. And I'm waiting to try to get this by name uh, request to go through. Well, they have an opening. So you have to come out to an opening. Uh, and they had had a, uh, a major who was in the position and he screwed up and they fired him. Okay, I am a first lieutenant at this time, and, you know, I'm in my 
mid 20s absolutely no sense of failure if you will and okay they fired a major doesn't matter didn't didn't actually didn't phase me a bit uh i should have been more scared but um they said well we can put in a by name request for you okay this is great well i'm working with personnel now i have to get a early release and you're, you're going to wonder why the thunderbirds are here and i'll explain in a second uh, i had to get an early release from the training command but oh my gosh i was so valuable there was this major down there at uh, MPC, Military Personnel Command or whatever, and oh my God, they, he can't let me go. He just cannot let me go early. I'm too valuable as an instructor pilot, and I'm going, oh, come on, you got to be kidding. So he starts, starts telling me the story about how he had been selected to be maintenance officer for the Thunderbirds, but ATC, uh, the training command, would not release him early, and so he didn't get to go. And because he didn't get to do what he wanted to do, why should I let you do what you want to do? And I argued with him, but he just was not budging. Funny thing, and this is where it comes back to you want to be careful who you screw over in the Air Force uh, or in aviation, period. Uh, I later got way at the end. I'm getting ahead of my story. I got hired by United Airlines. He later... Uh, got out of the Air Force and got hired by United Airlines. And he was in the training center and I saw his picture and his name up on the wall. And I thought about tracking this guy down, but you know, as they say, violence is not the answer. Uh, so I decided just to let it go. But it, I think it was funny that our paths could have crossed, although they never did. But anyway, okay, so I missed that slot. It wasn't going to work out. They still wanted me by name request, okay, coming out there from the wing commander out at Edwards. Uh, but now they've got another slot opening. See, the major they brought in for the major they fired, okay, you following this, fire, bring a major in, fire him, bring another major in. They fired the second major. This should have been a warning to me. Now, I, I went through this position. I was never fired, okay, so that's the good thing. I'm, I'm getting ahead of my story here. But, um, okay, finally, ATC doesn't need me anymore. Well, they, they did, but I had fulfilled my commitment to the training command and I was up for reassignment. So before they sent me to commissary officer, I get this by name request to go through and the wing commander, he kind of would still help me under the table here. Uh, but we got it to go through and I got papers to go out and be uh, officer in charge of current ops command post. And the whole deal was uh, they were going to bring me out as a T-38 chase pilot. Well, okay. I eventually got it, and there's some stories in that too, but fly the T-38, not so fast. And I'll tell you in the next episode how that thing all transpired. So you can see there, a bunch of career decisions, things you do, uh, getting in trouble with procedures, all these can affect uh, what happens. And it, it gets to be, it's just one decision, action, turning point after another, and you come to the conclusion that your career could go in so many different ways. It's just amazing. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you found it interesting and enjoyable.